the team that uh, that played for Liverpool in the uh, late seventies, early eighties, is comparable to any 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 team, uh, any British side that has performed, any European team, I'll say, that has, has performed uh, in the last 30, 40 years. And I'm never sure that that Liverpool team ever gets the credit for, for the achievements that they had. We, as Nottingham Forest team, seem to have the Indian sign over them. But, but Liverpool, for a prolonged period, were exceptionally successful. I went to England in 75. And we played against, I remember, one of the shock results about 77, when Sunes and, on, and all Douglas and everybody like that was there, and they were, they were winning everything. Um, they were about to win the title, and we beat them 5-1 at Villa Park. And we were 5-1 up at half-time. And we were a good side. We were, I think we went second. But they won the league by a distance after that. Uh, they were just brilliant. They were so professional. They were so good. I mean, they were unbelievably good players. Uh, and they took that through to the mid-80s, where again, I had another good spell when Everton bloodied their nose for a bit. But that, that team, that era, was full of gifted, talented, you go from Hansen, Sunes, Dalglish, Rush. I mean, goodness me, four like that. They had some outstanding players, uh, like some Rush, Sunes. Dalglish, obviously European Cup winners as well, and uh, um, those teams of the 80s were, were outstanding. So uh, myself as a United player during that year, it was, it was a bit daunting going up against them because they knew how to get things done. Yeah, I was brought in 1980, so uh, ever since I was at Liverpool, we used to win the trophies. And, uh, and the league? Yeah. Virtually every oh, year. Yeah, we, yeah, so we played in the 80s, won six times, you know, and uh, then we were, we were banned then, you know, nothing and all that, but then uh, Everton come along as well, you know, Everton were a fantastic team, but, uh, you know, I just feel um, it's only when you don't win something, you realise, you know, what's happening, all that, but you expect to win it uh, all the time. In 1990, I would say the, the squad we had wasn't, um, I mean, not strong, wouldn't be as strong as today's squad, not, but wasn't as strong as um, some teams in the 90s. But what they had, they had their great um, players, you know, likes of you know, Barry Benison, you know, Gary Ablett, Steve Stones, and you know, they wouldn't go down as the best players in there, but what they did, they always delivered and they always upped the game when they were asked to play, you know, and uh, that's why uh, I think we were so successful because we all helped each other. And these players, um, you know, wore their hearts out for the club and all that, and, uh, and that's what we all, that's what we had there. We had, of course, we had match winners and all that, but also we need the players there that need to you know, do, do the nitty gritty, you know, all that. You know, people like, you know, uh, like Ronnie Whelan when he was in there. You know, Ronnie Whelan didn't get the credit um, from me anyway what they deserved. It's only when he isn't playing and we maybe weren't winning, people are like, what's happening? Well, maybe because Ronnie Whelan's not playing. You no, know, because it's a bit similar to Jordan Henderson. You know, when they say that when. Sometimes when they're not playing, uh, they get criticised when they're playing, and when they're not playing, they realise you know, what, what contribution they made for the team. When I played for Liverpool, I felt like I played under Bill Shankly, because the tradition of Liverpool from Bill Shankly to Bob Pays to Joe Fagan to Kenny Dan Leash, they just continued that tradition, that philosophy, everything that went along with that, which meant that when you won a title, you forgot about it because you've got to do it again the next year. So, obviously, with hindsight and looking back, had I known it's going to be 30 years, I won't say it would have meant more to me, but I probably would have savoured it more because, of course, at the time we didn't think we were never going to do it again for 30 years or I was not going to do it again the year after the year after that. Um, so hindsight's a wonderful thing. But at the time, the way we actually treated triumph and disaster, because in 89 we lost to Arsenal, but losing the last game of the season, losers' medals, pre-season training July the 7th. That's all Ronald Moran said because we had to have that hunger to do it again and again. So when we, lost, when we won the title in 1990, we didn't think, oh, we've got to make sure that because this could be the next 30 years. We fully expected to win in the next year. And when we didn't, we came second or third. We still expected it. I would say probably when it got to 96, 95, 96 is when I probably thought, well, we're not going to win it in my time. I think early on in the Premier League, I think they took their eye off the ball. I think whoever owned them, whoever was making decisions, thought, well, Liverpool, and we'll just keep going. But what happened is the Manchester United, the Arsenals, um, particularly those two, got their act together. 
prepared to spend money, prepared to invest in talent, prepared to move the game forward. And I think they caught Liverpool cold and Liverpool took, have taken ages to catch up. Ages to catch up. But I think that for a few years of the Premier League, they took their eye off the ball. By the time they got themselves gone again, going again, there was a gap between them that should never have been there. The old Liverpool guard uh, diminished and, and, and exited the club. And that long-standing Bible they had on how to follow success at Liverpool uh, got broken up and then they tried to reinvent it over several years. And then there wouldn't be as much money as other clubs had to buy the players that we needed until this period of time where that the stability of the club and the growth of the club has been taken over a number of years. Generally speaking, the team that, uh, that, um, that wins the league are maybe the best side. So perhaps, perhaps they were just better teams. It might just be as simple as that. There were other better clubs. Manchester United were stronger over a whole season. But Liverpool could maybe take them on and on a, on a maybe just a, a, a game by game basis. But at the end of it, when you, when you taught up the points, then Liverpool were short, and they're short because eventually they weren't good enough. It's a telltale sign for teams when they talk about finishing in the top four. When you hear about a team saying we want to be in the top four, it means fourth, third at best, not first or second. And we became a team who said we've got to be in the top four. Football happened, meaning once the Premier League came about and football changed, whereby if you look at what Liverpool did at the time when they were consistent and they were winning, was they had a consistency of personnel, a consistency of the philosophy of Liverpool, but then football changed, when all of a sudden, every year, you got five, six new players coming in. When I first came to Liverpool in 87, it was a big upheaval because me and Peter Beardsley and Ray Houghton came. It was like three players, and it was like, what's going to happen? Because you had the consistency of Liverpool all those years. We managed to, 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 to maintain that. But then all of a sudden, in the 90s, you then had six players leaving, six new players coming in. And then you're just going to cross your fingers and hope that it's going to work out. Whereas before, you didn't have to cross your fingers because you had the majority of the successful team, players who understood what it was like to play for Liverpool, the history, the, the pressure, um, what it took, and then two new players coming in, you went along with that. When you get all of a sudden wholesale change of six, seven players going, six, seven players coming in, you really don't know if it's going to work. And that was just what happened in modern football, because once 93, 94 came and the Premier League started, what then happened was then players just changed clubs all the time, whereas Liverpool team had been together for years and years and years and years. So it's really just the, the, the change in football and Liverpool were very slow to catch up with that change because we were, I won't say we're stuck in the past, but we still like the Liverpool tradition. So anybody, any managers came after that had to buy into Liverpool tradition. This is what we did in Liverpool. When Graham took over, you know, Graham had just come from Rangers. Uh, he won the league easily in Rangers and, uh, you know, I think he's um, maybe tried to change things too quickly when he first came. I think if you asked him now, he'd most probably tell you that as well. You know, for me, he could have been... I think Graham soon as Graham soon as manager today, he'd be one of the best, one would be the best in the world. But what happened um, in the early 90s was that uh, a lot of young ones, uh, the young kids on the cop, you know, uh, they, they're coming along and they had the older staters like myself, you know, Jan Moby, Ronnie Whelan, John Barnes and all that. And um, I think um, Graham maybe said to the young ones, you're, you're the new ones, uh, put them in and uh, they weren't winning. You're better than the older ones and um, they were losing games. So we had to bring the older ones back and uh, say you're better than the younger ones. And uh, I think he lost the young ones and the old ones, you know, and, and because he tried to change things too quickly. And I think all his ideas, what Graham had, were right because he come back from Italy. I knew after playing in Italy what, the, uh, what it was all about and all his ideas had were right but he's most probably a bit ahead of his time you know he had to do it slowly and uh, I think he lost um, he maybe lost the, the dressing room then and when you lose your dressing room it's, it's always hard to, to get back. Graham actually knew having been in Italy that the mindset of Liverpool had to change with the Premier League starting um, and, and Liverpool's philosophy was steeped in the boot room the boot room psychology, you know, this is how we do it. And football was moving on. And I think Graham knew that. If I was critical of anything Graham did, he might have tried to have done it too quickly. Right? That would be my only, and that's a terrible criticism. 
He saw it needed changing. He tried to implement the changes, but I think, and he might agree with me, I think he tried to do everything too quickly and it, it, it didn't work for him in that respect. Roy came over and then Roy was trying to go back to the um, the old school again. You know, like when Ronnie was there, you no know, Ronnie not and trying, but Roy was maybe a little bit too nice. And uh, I think you ask these uh, young ones now, well, obviously they've got more experience now, where they maybe, uh, they should have uh, maybe listened to the manager a bit more, you know, when they were doing their own stuff and all that. Because I, when you're a kid, I was the same when you're a kid, you think you're invincible mm. and all that, you know. You, but at the end of the day, these supporters are fine as long as you're winning. If you're not winning, they'll ask questions. Mm -hmm. And that's what the supporters do. It's no good being all this. You know. A lot of them were saying, doing what off the pitch rather than on the pitch. Because they thought um, on the pitch, you know, we're going out, we'll go out and winning. But uh, yeah, then the opposition did get better. So we were getting beat by the opposition. And, uh, and that's the reason why supporters uh, start asking questions. I felt we could have won a title between 1990 and 1993. Between 93 and 97, I thought we had the potential to win the title, but I don't think we had the mentality because um, the team in 95, 96 was a fantastic team. Um, but I always felt, because of, of coming into April, we were in with a chance to win the title. And I always felt we'd fall away because when you are, unless you're going to be 25 points ahead like Liverpool, when you are coming into a title challenge with two or three teams in April, it's not the team who plays the best football, it's the team who's going to get a result, who may not play well but get a draw, play badly and win, grind results out. This is what Manchester United were doing. We had to play well to win. Look at the Newcastle 4-3 and the games we played when we were fantastic winning 5-0. But then when we didn't play well, we wouldn't win. And it got to the stage between 94 and 97 when people were getting excited in March because we're playing good football and we're only a few points off the top. And I always felt we will fall away because we didn't have that mentality, um, that discipline to, to grind results out. When you arrived here at the club in 1998, did you arrive, and we know about your history with, with Liverpool, but did you arrive with a real genuine belief that you could win the league for this football club? No, not really, because we had to rebuild the team and we need uh, some years. But, um, I mean, I, when I arrived at Liverpool, um, the people in charge told me that the culture of the club is to win trophy, to win silverware. and. Uh, we didn't do too badly because we won <laughs> six trophies in six years. And the first year was not my year, obviously, but uh, we had to rebuild the team, maybe change. Sometimes you have to turn, change things around. And uh, we brought new players that uh, lasted a long time here, like Sam Ipia, for instance. I think some very talented young English players were here already with... Uh, Mike Owen, Jimmy Carragher, and of course Steven Gerrard afterwards. So it was uh, no, I had the impression we could win something, but not winning the team. Uh, at the time, the battle was with Manchester United and Arsenal. Do you remember? Did you ever feel close? I know you said you finished. Yeah, second. we finished close. Uh, I think it, you know, normally when you finish over eighty points, now it's far more. But eight with. You know, more than 80 points and above Manchester United, we would thought that we, we would think that you know it, it would have been it, it would it would have been the title, but it was not because I think Arsenal had uh, us runs as well. Sir Alex Ferguson is famous for rebuilding his teams and signing players and going through that process constantly of you know having players ready to be the next generation and so that it never skips a beat and always evolving and always in, always advancing with the times and the next generation of players always being in tow with that and I think that that's what you have to do it has to be a constant cycle I feel like there's times where you've got to make tough decisions on big players and move them away for the greater good of the team and it has to be you know it's a, it's a complex thing it's not as easy as just buying players and putting them together and I think Liverpool have obviously then come up against great Manchester United and Arsenal teams and Chelsea teams and Man City teams. So 
they probably find, think they've been very unfortunate. And you get a period where clearly they, they've won cups and they've won European cups and Champions Leagues. It's, it hasn't been a bad period, that's what we're not saying. But, but the league, and I remember my time when uh, we went 26 years without winning a, a league title, and, uh, and I was there four or five years before and coming through the ranks. And uh, every year that it went on that we hadn't won the league, then the pressure built and it got more and more difficult. But once we got to the point and we won it, that then that's when it makes it easier for for the teams that fall, uh, or the teams that wear the, the shirt, Man United, and and maybe that will happen for for Liverpool certainly in the initial period. I think. During your time at Manchester United, did you ever see Liverpool as contenders? Yes, once. I think the season when uh, Torres was striker and they gave us a, a real title challenge right till the end. I think we always believed we'd win the league. I always felt we were the, the superior team and that happened to play out that way but they did they did give us a, a good battle one year and um, they're always a massive rival but they, they weren't really title rivals as such maybe one season and then um, um, I think then that summer they had a few interesting transfers that they didn't build on finishing second place and challenging us and they almost went backwards again which was um, you know, disappointing for them and maybe thankful for us. It was an incredible journey that we, we had that season. You know, the, the pride in the football that we played, how close we got. After 38 games, you, you deserve to finish where you finish. But what we, we played some brilliant football, so many great memories for the team and the supporters that year to get to the pinnacle and be so close well, it was a great achievement. And, and like I said, if, you know, if we had the investment, then it might, have been, it might have been different. So it was just a real shame that we got so close, uh, didn't quite get over the line. Um, but I'll never forget that, that season in particular, uh, as well as the overall Liverpool experience. He's a perfect fit as a Liverpool manager. They love him. They love him. I mean, they love Benitez, but as far as he's concerned, that Dill, no. Klopp's here now. Klopp's getting, he's up there with Shankly, Bob Paisley. I'm pretty sure of it, as far as Liverpool fans are concerned. He gets Liverpool, um, and Liverpool get him. Liverpool have bought into everything he's doing, because for the first two years, his record wasn't better than Brendan's, but, but the fans gave him the power to drop players, to pick players, to do whatever he wanted, and they supported him, and he can see the outcome of that. Now, when Brendan was here and, and it didn't win, we would blame him and say he's playing the wrong team and we would boom and we would criticise him, which then affects the team because the players then see he hasn't got the power. Whereas now the players know if, if he drops Salah, the fans aren't going to boo, boo him. They'd support him. And the only two teams in the country that gives the manager that power are Manchester City and Liverpool. This is why they're the two best teams. Liverpool haven't got better players than Manchester United necessarily or Arsenal or Tottenham, but the harmony, the togetherness, the belief and the trust in the manager is there, which means we, we produce what we do. When you talk about Bob Paisley, the best thing Bob Paisley had was the boot room staff. You know, the people around him. You know, Joe Fagan, Ronnie Moran, Roy Evans, you know, all that. And everyone knew each other's job. And no one wanted each other's job. And that's it. And I think uh, the team he's got round Jurgen, the team he's got round him, exactly the same. You know, where he's a leader, but he needs um, the coaching staff around him, and uh, you can see they're all doing their individual jobs. So that allows Jurgen to concentrate on the man management of the players. Even though tactically, you know, we know what to do. Jurgen will tell them, then they go and do it. Pep will go and do it, his, his job as well. So I think it's all around that. So uh, the most important thing. Um, for a football manager, in my opinion, is uh, demand management. You know how to uh, handle every individual, because all the individuals, you know, the, the, the different minds set and everything and all that, and Jürgen knows how to do that. He understands Liverpool in terms of what Liverpool fans expect from their team in terms of the humility, the respect that they have to have for Liverpool itself. The nature of the, the players that are at Liverpool have to have a humility and a reverence to the club and to their teammates. No superstars in the team. You've got superstar individual players for other clubs, but at Liverpool we don't have that because that is what Scousers like, if you know what I mean. And he has really bought into that. Last year finished second, he could have won it. Because, I mean, in fairness, finishing with 97 points, only one defeat. Uh, I think they deserve it as well as probably deserve it uh, Manchester City on the day. But he finished second. I mean, uh, before him, 
Brendan Rodgers finished second yes, one. 2004. Um, Rafael Benitez finished second. We finished second as well. So that means at some stage we knew it, it was going to come. Mm -hmm.